In this video, I'm gonna show you a $200 gaming and streaming PC that I built using used parts from my local area. And the best part about it is you can replicate this and get a fantastic opportunity for you as a console streamer looking to upgrade your stream or someone looking to do some light gaming. Let's get into this video. I'm Brandon and I'm here to improve the streaming experience not only for you, but also for your viewers. And we're doing exactly that in today's video by showing you this amazing $200 gaming and streaming PC. You see, many people are still gaming on their new PS5 or Xbox series, or they might be on the old PS4 or the Xbox Ones. And regardless of that, you're looking to get into streaming, but you don't want to spend a ridiculous amount of money, maybe paying to for someone to build you a PC from one of these integrators, or maybe just buying a laptop. Well, today I've got an option for you. These are used parts that most people start considering e-waste that will do a fantastic job for what you want. And I'm still going to show you in this video benchmarks of how this $200 PC can still play games like Apex Legends, CSGO, Valorant, things like Splitgate, Rocket League, really light esports titles and still be able to stream them as well. You're probably asking yourself the question, which PC are you talking about? So this is the PC in question. This one is the Dell Inspiron 3668. And we're not necessarily speaking about this one in particular, but a Dell pre-built in itself, like an Optiplex. Those are some pretty common pre-built that you can throw a graphics card in because they already have decent internals and still get a great gaming and streaming PC. This isn't new to the tech space, but I wanted to cover one that I was able to get for such a cheap cost. To pair with this Dell Inspiron, I picked up a couple different GPUs so that you could know that I was able to find them within a day. Uh, we've got an AMD RX 560, and we also picked up from Team Green a GTX 1050 Ti. This is a low profile card, not that it really matters. They're still gonna go really well in this PC. Now that we know what the graphics cards are, let's talk about this build and what we have specs wise inside. This particular Dell Inspiron has an Intel i5 from 7th gen, which is an i5-7400. It has eight gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. And for the SSD, we have a 240 gig SSD that I added in just to make things a little more snappy, but it did come with a one terabyte hard drive. This was just an optional upgrade that I felt was needed. Again, for the graphics cards, we have an AMD RX 560, the two gigabyte model that still includes a hard encoder on the chip so that we can actually have our stream encode on the graphics card and not use any of our system resources from the CPU. From Team Green, we actually have the NVIDIA GTX 1050 Ti, the legendary budget card for so many years. The specific model is a low profile Zotac card and on the GTX 1050 Ti, you still have a hardware encoder from the Pascal generation. So now that we understand all of the specs, let's go ahead and throw one of these graphics cards in and I'm going to show you that process to show you how easy it is to put one of these in a pre-built and get started. I don't even think I'm going to cut it. I think we're going to leave it in real time. Let's throw the 1050 Ti in. So we're going to remove the side panel. We're going to take off the front fascia, put that to the side. We're going to slide this opening bit out right here so that we can expose the internals. Pop open the cage to hold it in and install the graphics card as so into the topmost PCIe slot. Pop, pop. Put this front fascia back on. And then put the front of the PC back together. Pull the side. And just like that. You have yourself a gaming PC. Let's jump into some benchmarks, not only for gaming on the build, but let me show you streams that I've done on this PC using, I think we're gonna stream only with the RX 560 because the GTX 1050 Ti is obviously going to outperform it on a stream, but I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you, it's gonna perform really well. Let's get into that.
the graphics card in here is an RX 560. Uh, it's a two gigabyte variant. It's not powerful, but the benefit and the main goal of this build was not to actually like blow it away with the performance, gaming performance on here, which is still games. I did test that out. It wasn't to blow you away on gaming performance, but to show you that you can get a stream PC for your console. So like if I go over here, you can see here's my console. And here's my Xbox One X, right? Everything's connected and it's running beautifully. I have no problems at all. I got the sound coming through. Everything's great, right? So as long as all of this works wonderful, but I can still run games and I think I can't show you because I don't think I have display capture set up. Um, but I do have the opportunity. I think I might boot something like maybe Destiny or maybe Splitgate on stream and let you just see what it looks like. It might crash stream because <laughs> I haven't tested streaming. That's why we're here today. I haven't tested streaming and do and playing. So we'll have to see what that looks like. Um, but anyway, I'm really happy with the build, the setup. It was all great. And it's so small. I mean, we're talking about like less or oh, just about a foot long, honestly. And maybe about 18 inches tall so you can tell like here's my arm this is the height that it is to my 4000 D I mean it maybe takes up two-thirds of the depth of my 4000 D and for $200 and if you didn't change out the if I didn't change out the hard drive it would have been $160 because I got that RX 460 or 560 for $60 and then I got this tower plus like a Dell keyboard mouse for a hundred a seventh gen i5 not a fourth gen like you would get in the normal like dell stuff like we're talking about a seventh gen i5 a good, like a much better ipc this is pretty cool so i think we're going to game tonight we're going to test to see what it looks like and especially with 4k like render times are going to be really so all right here we go let's get this snipe shall we Older, you know, older titles. They still own this older stuff, right? And so they still want to get into streaming, but they don't want to just use. Alright, focused up. I'm going to test it out streaming and doing some recording while having this open, but I'm pretty sure everything's going to be just fine. It ran just fine. So, guys, I'm going to dip. I hope you all have a great night. Thank you so much for stopping by and checking out this PC. I'm thoroughly impressed. And if I'm impressed, that means we've actually done something great. Now, some of you are probably going to ask the question, now, Brandon, what about some budget hardware to pair with this? Seeing as you're using a budget system, you're, I don't want you to invest a lot of money in maybe the capture card or a, a webcam either. So let's talk about some budget options. This is the Mirabox 4K pass-through capture card. And if you're playing in 4K on your TV, you're going to be able to pass that through still non-HDR and non-high refresh, but 4K 60 just fine and still be able to capture 1080p 60 frames per second. And this is right around $40 the last time I checked. I'll go ahead and put up the listing right here. This is a fantastic card. And if you want to see a review on this, check the card in the top right corner and I'll go ahead and show you that one. For the webcam that you actually see, it is a Nanshiba 1080p wide angle webcam. This one, when I originally purchased it, was around $50. This is when the Logitech webcams weren't available. And now that you can get C920Ss for around $60, this one has dropped to about $30. So if you're looking for a budget option, this is a fantastic choice. Not only do you get that wide field of view, but you also get some options on adjusting the color temperature, the saturation, zoom, autofocus, things that you want and a webcam. If you want to see a review on this, it's kind of old, but if you want to see a review on this, check the card in the corner. So my final thoughts on this is if you can get parts, something like this, and go ahead and check in the description. I'll leave some eBay search links that I'm not affiliated with, but the Amazon links will be affiliate links. So you'll support the channel if you purchase through those. But the eBay links will take you to some things like a Dell Optiplex MT3020, which is a fourth gen i5, which will perform almost as good as this, just a few generations 
behind. And you'll also find some listings for some graphics cards I recommend, like a 1050 Ti, maybe even a GTX 1050 non-Ti. These are cards that you can probably get around that same $100 range and get this build to around $200. Those Optiplexes you can get for $100 all day, and most of the time they still come with RAM and a hard drive as well as Windows. And that'll bring us to the end of the video. If you want to see more capture card reviews, check this video right here. And if you want to see why I ended my Twitch affiliate contract, check this video out right here. I'm Brandon. And welcome to the darkness. We'll catch you in the next one.